Hey everyone, down here at Fierce 4x4 Fabrications with Darko. And today we're making new video for you. Darko, what are we doing today? G'day, they call me Dark. Right, we got an 80 series diff here, she's used. Don't know how good she is. The center feels pretty tight. A little bit of backlash, but the typical thing with an 80 series being full time 4x4. Anyway, we're gonna be ripping out the knuckles pulling out the axles, get ready to put all new knuckle hub seals, knuckle wipers, bearings. We're going with uh, 100 series roller spindle bushes, the brass bushes, and we'll be putting new slotted and uh, dimpled rotors onto it with Bendix heavy duty four wheel drive pads. <laughs> through the tools you'll need to do this job. You'll need a good half inch socket set with a 24, a 19, a 17, a 12 and a 14 and a nice big 54 mil hub nut socket. Now yours, your vehicle might not be a 54, it's standard for most diffs as you'll need a big hub nut socket. Your manufacturer will be able to tell you or your manual will, will be able to tell you which socket you need. Now, specialty stores will have these, and you can normally get them from your manufacturer too as a part. So there'll be a part number in your manual for them. You'll also need a good set of long nose pliers to get split pins and all that sort of stuff out. So, a good socket set will get you through this job. Now, because of the Toyota, everything's going to be metric. So, that's what you need. So, everything you'll get will be metric. Well, should be, if someone hasn't stuck with it. And a pair of circlet pliers. Those, those will come in handy. You can get around it without a set of circlet pliers, but they make the job so much easier if you have the correct tools. Okay, so what we're gonna start with is we're gonna grab out the 24 mil. We're gonna crack the drain plug, and drain all the oil. This isn't what you want to see coming out of a diff. That is almost like bloody chocolate or it's full of water. And that is not what healthy diff oil is supposed to look like. At all. At all, nah. Is that even diff oil? Oh no. It almost looks like motor oil that they've filled it with. Looks like the molly grease you pack your bearings with. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got the div drained. Is now we're going to be moving on to the next part of it. Okay, so now we're just taking the brake lines off because we're going to be redoing all the brakes as part of this rebuild. Pull out the locking tab and the hoses out. So a good upgrade is braided brake lines, but they're not necessary. A good set of rubber ones will generally be an awesome improvement over however old the brake lines actually are on your diff. These are probably the original lines. You, oh, can, yeah, you can feel by how stiff they are that these aren't far off going. Really, a good set of rubber lines should be stiff, but not hard. It's actually taking a lot of effort to bend this. We're gonna remove the brake caliper now. There's two tie down bolts. They're generally very well done up. Might go with the brake bar on this, to be quite honest, because the diff's not very secure on its stand. Don't do that. The upside to a breaker bar is it gives you a lot longer leverage, allows you put more torque through to the actual bolt you're trying to undo. Right, we've loosened up the uh, brake pads, so it should slip off. Once it slips off, be careful to try and remember which way the pads go. Try and keep all this together. You can see they've put anti-rattle lube in here to stop it from rattling. 
And then there's the other section in between, which is the breather and the pad. These pads have actually got a lot of meat on them, but the discs were never machined. As you can see by the lip, that's awful. If you see that on your brake pads, straight to the mechanic you go. Or come and see me. I like to stuff a little bit of paper towel in between there, it's quick, cheap and easy just to hold it in place until you get back to it and get back onto the brakes and then you can copy exactly the way they went in with the new pads. Okay, we're going to undo the tie rod bar and take off the tie rod bar. So we've got split pins down here that lock into the castle nuts. We'll try and straighten them out the best we can. They'll be replaced with new ones obviously. Never reuse stuff like this because the whole act of putting it in and removing it will fatigue the metal. And so after a couple of goes putting it in and taking them off, it will end up to the point where the metal is fatigued so much that they'll just snap with the slightest bit of force applied to them. Very cheap insurance to put new ones. Right, we got a 19mm socket. We're gonna try and break this. Can you pass me the mallet please? Little tiny bit of shock loading is all that's needed. Easy. They shouldn't be done up super tight. If they're, if they're done up to the point where you need to be the Incredible Hulk to get them off, then they're too tight. Generally I like to mark what side's what, so I put D for darker, driver's side. B for passenger. Okay, we're going to use a ball joint puller. Nice and cheap, I think this one was 25 bucks. Push it underneath the rubber. Get the bolt nice and centered. Get the 19mm socket onto it. Taking care with your hand not to get your fingers pinched. Sometimes they do require a heck of a lot of force put on them to actually get them to pop. So, now we're going to pop the cap off. Really the only point of that cap is to keep dust. All, all your oil and grease in and all the dust from getting in and dust and water and stuff mixing with it. They're just basically a press on cap. So, and as you can see, that is the very end of the axle CV right there. So that's got a circlip on it. You grab your circlip pliers. You, you can do without them, but they are really nice to have. They make life so much easier. They can be a bit of a bastard to get off. There's a lot of tension on them. And they have a habit of doing that when they finally do come off. Anyway, that's off. Now we're going to take the full-time locking hub cap off, which is a full-time locking. There is no uh, locking mechanism like you'll see on other four-wheel drives, which is a freewheeling hub mechanism. Again. Tap. Your manual will have all the torque specs for doing these back up, but at this stage we're just undoing them. If they've been correctly torqued, just a slight little bit of persuasion won't hurt them. I like to leave the nuts on until I split the cone washers. Once the cone washers are split, because they have a habit of flying 25 miles south, if you take the nut off, so in order to not lose cone washers, which you've also got a habit of losing themselves in your pocket, we just undo the nuts to near the end. Then we'll want a firm hammer on this one. There's two ways. Some will try and crack the ends. But most will just tap on the side. Is 
as you can see, closer up, the cone has popped out. There's a split in the cone, which compresses as you do it up, and the front tap, out she pops nicely. Now you've just got to split this off, so I've got a couple of belts with a screwdriver, loosen it off, and that'll pop right off, nice and easy. And discard the gasket, this new gasket will be put on, on reassembly. Okay, so as you can see, we've now exposed and cleaned the grease off the hub nuts. So there's locking tabs, which sit up against them. You just gotta give these a quick little bend out. Now some people reuse them, some people don't. It's up to the condition, it's better to get new ones, but you can reuse the old ones if they're still in really good nick. This is where that really big socket we showed before comes into play. Good with the breaker bar. And bang, she's off. Now we get the washer out, the locking washer. And that exposes the other nut behind it. So you'll locking have... washer has a little tooth, which tooths into the spline. Here somewhere, you can see on the brass thread, there's the notch where that slips over and locks that in. That's what locks your outer nut. We're gonna take off now the backing plate, so we're going to have to undo the spindle retainer nuts, bolts. You can do this bit by hand, but having a rattle gun just makes everything so much easier. Now these coming off, you don't have to put them in any particular order, but it is, really. it is best to put them back on in order, but that will come during the assembly. Generally, we use a crisscross when I'm doing things. Wheel. We'll get to that bit in the assembly. I'm going to take the spindle off. That way. Be careful she don't fall. Slide her off carefully. The berth's trying to drop out. Okay, axle out. Real nice messy. Get a load of that grease. Alright, we're gonna undo the lower kin pins and remove the other. Cross. Put the old mallet, cone washers, one before, there's two, still got two left. Now just because of the angles these can be a pain to take off, but they will just slide off. Now I normally don't say be gentle, but you try and be gentle with stuff like this because if you damage it, it just makes life harder. Expensive. And that. Lower out. To remove the bolts from the upper. Normally you can wedge it up with a screwdriver, but if it's been stuck from the bottom through the lower kin pin hole and give her a firm tap up. Want to do that, Darko, and show how you can go all the way through from the bottom? Got messy, might as well. You can reach right up in through and give her a smack from the bottom. 
what we see. Straight out the top. We're going to take off the wiper seal covers, retainers. Taking off the wiper seal covers, retainers. Try not to drop your greasy, grease-filled bloody bearings. Go. Now we're going to top out the bearing. Bottom one fell out before. Now if your bearing is absolutely stuck in there, that means that it's gotten too hot and something's gone wrong. Okay, it's a bit hard to see in here. If we wipe back the grease, There's little notches. Can you see that little notch? Yep, I can see that here. Hopefully it's on camera. Okay, we'll use the screwdriver. Get the screwdriver into the notch. Little tap one side, work to the other side. That's gonna drop on the concrete. Bang. The bottom one out. And we do the same with the top one. As we're packing up for the day, just to stop moisture getting in here, surface rust, everything, one good thing you can wrap, wrap it in cling wrap come back to it tomorrow, next week, that sort of thing. That'll keep the moisture and everything out. Cling wrap, not just for the kitchen.